Can I go off the, a little bit in another direction? Once you stay with inside the terms of reference, you can go wherever you like, Senator. Okay. Just a lot of the good stuff has already been covered, in fairness, and, and Dr. Byrne's presentation was so, was so good. I'm sure you'll find all this stuff. Um, what's your opinion of the various political forms that have been introduced by the current government and, um, and those that are under consideration by the Convention uh, of the Constitution? And what impact do you feel these reforms would have on the various relationships between state authorities, parties, elected reps, supervisory authorities, banks, and so on? Uh, well, again, I refer to my shoe and shoelaces argument that, uh, in many respects, Ireland has some of the, the best practice legislation uh, on governance. However, it's about implementation, it's about uh, culture, and um, there have been various scandals in the last year, for instance, relating to um, Shannon appointments, which presents a picture to the public that um, that there is somehow unorthodox influence over appointments in public life, and often these things are are regulated. And um, so I refer back to to that that argument. But on the constitutional convention, um, as someone who was uh, part of the reason why that happened through the We the Citizens thing, I, I'm very disappointed by it. I think it was a missed opportunity. I think uh, a lot of the questions that were presented to the Constitutional Convention weren't really the big questions of the day and there is this tendency by government to focus on numbers in their reforms, how many local county councils there are, how many um, TDs there are, what the salaries of particular individuals are, whether somebody should vote um, at, at 18 or 16, whether the age to be president is 35 or 21. There is this focus on um, in the reform programme by the, the coalition on numbers rather than as the, the uh, um, people in this chair yesterday talked about the, where power is. So I think the Constitutional Convention was a missed opportunity. Is there legislation uh, anywhere in the world that um, in some way holds political parties to account in terms of manifesto versus programme for government? Uh, yes, it's called elections. But it, <laughs> apart from elections... Thank you very there, much. That's the, one of the major findings yeah, of no. this inquiry. Thank you. <laughs> no, but is there? Because uh, somebody had suggested to me that, 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 that in, in, in Canada, perhaps, there is some... Uh, way of, of holding Party A to account who promised X but reneged on it or, or did the opposite? I'm not aware of, of that, but um, if there was, I would not be surprised that such reforms exist in Canada because they, they're often ahead of the curve on a lot of these kind of things. Are the benchmark in terms of this Yeah, and a lot of things they would be, yeah. Um, just to veer slightly now, um, do you think uh, that... Um, in terms of, and it'll be something we'll be considering later, but as you're here, I just wanted to ask you from a journalistic perspective, is there a code of conduct uh, within newspapers for uh, how journalists you know, interact with the commercial world? Thanks. Uh, there's the NUI guidelines that came in as part of the 2009 Defamation Act um, uh, where there is a code of conduct, yes, there is. And so, is, there's six principles in it. Yeah. Okay, and that's it, 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 it's not related in any way to any legal, no, any law. No. Um, so, in terms of the relationship between the commercial return from property advertising, say, at a particular period, say 2004 to 2008, where in some publications the property supplements may have been bigger than. The news aspect of the of the thing. Do, do you think that that in any way uh, influenced the editorial policy of newspapers? Well, you're going to have the editors and the managing directors who will come in, and they're well, no, no, just asking your own view because yeah, of oh, your expertise, you know. Uh, and I would I would defer to the editors and that when they come in. I mean, when I was living in Australia, what was very noticeable was the property correspondence in the newspapers were uh, sponsored by particular property companies and the uh, financial correspondence in different newspapers and television reports were sponsored by particular banks. So there's all sorts of conflicts of interest there. So um, I don't think there was that to that extent here. Okay. Would... would, would uh, yeah, that's grand. 
Would there, would there ever have been an occasion, say, just for argument's sake, your own newspaper, the Sunday Business Post, it could be any newspaper, that you would be aware of where a commercial entity cancelled or pulled advertising because of a line of editorial? Well, I've written for the Irish Times, the Sunday Business Post and the Irish Times. Um, editorial interference is what you're referring to. Um, I have my own opinions about that uh, recent experience. Um, but uh, again, I would not be privy to those kind of decisions. What's your view? Because you, you said you have one. Speculate now. I don't want you to name names, but you know. I'll, I'll take the chair's advice. Okay, thank you.